Well, let me um, start the cycle, the IntelliCast cycle for you and see if you can spot one of those signatures that we talk about, like the next red harp rings or the extremely low frequencies. Okay, ready? Ah, whoa! Oh, I'm so, I shouldn't have done that because I gave it away. Shoot. Oh, well. That's not Mother Nature. Unless Mother Nature, you know, practice makes perfect. And she's had a lot of practice until she was put into retirement by militaries. Um, I don't know. Mother Nature doesn't work like that. All right, God, I, I feel like I'm just... Look at this. Look at these ultra-low frequencies. Okay. Voila. Now, remember, high-frequency heating with modulated extremely low frequencies, they can create hurricanes, earthquakes, localized heating. You can see the microwaves as well in here, too. But, let's see. Wow. Okay. Well, Mother Nature, a perfect, well, three-quarter circle, and she severs the top. Yeah, you go for it, Mother Nature. I would say circulate this. This might wake people up, but I don't think so. Uh-uh. No. People will say, oh, it's a glitch. You can show them all the documents. You can show them the high-frequency heating with modulated extremely low frequencies. And you can even uh, show them papers where they're talking about how the extremely low frequencies fan out and they're directional and, you know, all of that stuff. But they won't care. A subscriber left a comment. I thought it was great. I can't remember exactly how, you know, she set it up, but she said, how about make America smart again? Yeah, instead of great, smart again. Because that's what we, we really need. Um, okay, harp, next rad, <coughs> radar stations. High frequency heating of the ionosphere. <sighs> Have you ever seen an eye that large in a hurricane before? Of course you haven't. I want you to listen to a few minutes of the HARP report. Hello, this is a HARP report. Um, right now, Hurricane Florence is devastating uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. And I've found two things um, on the satellite maps that appear to be, or that could be, weather control operations designed to steer this hurricane for maximum damage. So what's happening right now is the hurricane's over Wilmington, and there's suddenly a pocket of dry air uh, appearing in front of the hurricane's eye. You can see it. I just want to say that Wilmington is further north. This is actually right where the radar station is. Little River. And there's a transmitter, transmitter site here as well. Wilmington, I think he's off a bit. Yeah. Let's look at that again. Wilmington is further north. So he is showing that right where I have shown you these extremely low frequencies are emitted from. Right uh, northeast of Little River. Okay. Here, this is... Uh goes 16 in uh, infrared mode 
and we're seeing the warmth of the ground here. And let me explain what that can possibly do as far as steering. But first I'll say, you know, looking at these um, Nexrad composites, this, this hurricane's actually trying to turn inland, and then you have this pocket of dry air show up, and that's holding it on the coast. So what could a pocket of dry air inserted in front of the eye wall do to a hurricane? So here's a cross section of a hurricane. Let's say that we can inject dry air onto this side, onto the, the lower right. And I'm talking cool dry air, so that it's not very buoyant. It's heavier than, say, the warm, humid air on this side. So that's going to shut down all the storms on this side. And what that's going to do is this inrush of air here, which is shown by this thick arrow, is going to tend to push the eye to the right. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? Of course, they've got some really, really complex computer modeling going on uh, if this is actually happening as a weather weapon. So if we go back to the uh, infrared image on GOES-16, you know, here you have some dry air being injected here. And, you know, the strange thing is right here, I'll let it run one more time, right about there. You know, what is causing that? That's kind of bizarre. Um, well, frequencies. Okay, I'll you know, below, and you can watch the remainder of this video. Uh, this is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. said I would not be here, but the numbers kind of flip-flopped around, so I said, well, I'll try to stay here. The problem is, if a tree came down, I couldn't get out uh, to fix it, put a tarp over it, I'd lose it, so I had to stay. Plus, my pets wouldn't let me leave. There's trees down, power lines down, it's, it's pretty rough. But I just rode around, and a lot of people have power, so it's very isolated. Very isolated. I said that the damage is going to come from trees falling because our trees now are so weak their immune systems pretty much shot from all of the geoengineering the dumping of these chemicals and heavy metals into the atmosphere that come on down and uh, infect with disease the root system of the trees because what is you know, being dumped in the atmosphere comes right on down into the soil. Now, you know, when you when you look at the videos of these trees, um, virtually every one, sorry, virtually every one is covered, just covered with fungal disease. And we are coming on the air right now to bring you the latest on Hurricane Florence, which still has the Carolina coast in its grip and which has turned deadly. At least four confirmed deaths related to the storm, including a mother and infant daughter killed. Right. Killed by a tree falling on the house. When a tree fell on their house here in Wilmington, a father was injured and taken to a hospital. We were on the sea. Do you see how diseased this tree is now? get it pretty much all over the country towns uh, the uh, the town council members they should be ordering the city workers to be cutting down these trees they should be attending to these trees but nobody is attending to these trees make america smart again I mean, it's staring us in the face. Staring us in the face. It's, it's like what's happened to our sky. Completely 
uh, surreal, the radical changes in our sky, nobody, it, it's ignored. The radical changes that have happened to our trees, it's ignored. I, I this is really, wow, it's just a wow. Now, this is Wilmington, apparently. Uh, the Weather Network never, I got a comment and it, it was about how I was not saying that homes did not get flooded. I wasn't saying that there was no damage in the video that I posted earlier showing the webcams, showing the difference between what we're seeing on the webcams and mainstream media reporting, the dramatization, all these drama queen reporters even Trump, you know, what did he say? It, 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 it's, uh, it's the biggest or worst hurricane in 25, 30, possibly ever, possibly ever, 25, 30 years, possibly ever. You know, when you, when you listen to that over and over and over again, how, how you've got to evacuate, you've got to get out. This hurricane is barreling on toward the coast. It's thrashing the coast. It's, you listen to these words that they use to describe what is taking place and what is taking place. Um, frankly, what we're seeing is unfortunately damage from We've seen flash flooding around the country worse than that. But these trees, of course they're going to come down. Of course. Look, this one has fungal disease. You know, this is not that, I'm sorry to say, it's not horrific flooding. When you think about Harvey, think about the flash flooding that has been occurring. So, when, they, when someone sends me this video to prove that there's damage, I understand there's damage. So you, you did not listen very carefully to what I was saying in that video. Yes, there is damage. Look at this tree. Look at all the fungal disease all over this huge, beautiful tree. Uprooted. Okay, well, look at it. It's hollow inside, and it's the roots are pretty much like dead and gone. This is not from the hurricane, or the tropical storm, or the winds. This is from the geoengineering. My God. Um. Trees are going to be coming down. They're going to be coming down here. You know, they will be coming down here. You know what really upset me tonight? This. This is a power outage map. A power outage map. And what, what are we seeing here? Okay. Um, a whole lot of power outages. The red is 20,000 plus customers out but without any power. The yellow, 1,001 to 20,000 customers without power. Green, 101 to 1,000. Blue, 1 to 100 customers out of power. And I hope for my subscribers who live in these areas that this is the worst that you will have to suffer. But, oh wow, upstate South Carolina already out of power. Greenwood is 1 to 100 customers out. Uh, Spartanburg, this is the area that I had posted a video. One of my subscribers said that her friend got a Duke energy email. That email said that you'll be without power 
for days or weeks. They're forecasting power outages now? Really? Well, they can pretty much do that when they can turn off the power. But knowing that virtually all trees now, you don't need an awful lot of wind to fell a tree. In fact, you don't even need any. Now the ground is so weakened itself. You know, it, it's so funny to me. The I come home, a neighbor tells me the TV told her that Anderson will be without power. I said, wow, so how do, how do they know that already, that we will be losing power? When I came over to this power outage, it included Anderson. Now it doesn't. I refresh because it was, I refresh all of my uh, pages open before I start a video. Otherwise, I may click on that window and you'll see a white screen. So, oh, they removed Anderson. So they had Anderson and then they remove it. How do they know already that we're going to have power outages? The TV told her, we're going to have power outages for days or weeks. Well, let me tell you, that kind of stresses me out pretty badly. I'm not going to be flooded, not where I am, not in this apartment. There will be flooding. Trees will be coming down. I explained all of that to that neighbor of mine. I explained it all. The TV told her that the ground is saturated from too much rain. Well, look, I don't know South Carolina well enough to say if they got a lot of rain, but I will tell you the ground is not saturated. And I told her, I said, they are already giving an explanation for the trees that will be coming down because the trees are so weak. I just pointed to the first tree right smack in front of us. I said, look at that, a diseased tree. And it doesn't take much to, to have it just topple over because they don't have the strength anymore. So they're not going to be talking about the geoengineering. You know, you can just look up in the sky. Wow, radical changes. And she's kind of like nodding her head, nodding her head. Now I think people just kind of humor me. So I want to um, show you. Now this apparently is New Bern, and other people have been linking to the video showing New Bern did get really flooded really bad. Did everybody misunderstand what I was saying? You know, I was just talking about how mainstream media reports these uh, weather events and I'm sorry that is tropical storm damage <laughs> there were some uh, stores or whatever that got damaged I'm not saying that nothing was damaged. The reporting though is really, well, could you get off the, uh, that one store? Okay, a tree came down. Absolutely. You know, um, shingles flew from roofs. You know, you had tornado watches. Well, you, <laughs> Now you, they can just create these uh, downbursts or whatever they're called. So 
And this is Moorhead City. Please understand that they were talking three feet of water. Trees down. That's what you're going to be seeing. Even this, I'm sorry, is not the kind of damage that you would expect from how this storm was reported. Being reported by Trump. I just want to show you the last two days what the sky has looked like here in Anderson, South Carolina. This is not unusual. The, this is just our normal cloud now. Black clouds, gray clouds, white clouds, mountain clouds, um, and cauliflower, cottage cheese clouds. But we did see more geoengineering in the past two days. Oh, and yeah, we're supposed to get flooded out with rain. We've got our vertical clouds. Th this is a typical day in Anderson, South Carolina. These clouds now, no one, no one says anything. This is just what clouds look like now. This is what our sky looks like. It's like, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, all right. Nothing unusual here. Now, we very often have these mountain clouds that are low. There's a lot of articles on why the clouds are so low. And then articles that say that our atmosphere is collapsing. That was a video that I wanted to do and may do. but. Um, our clouds are so low that on occasion I think they're going to smother us with clouds. That's how they're going to take us out. Um, the microwave frequencies that you can see. But very often they'll have these huge clouds and then you'll get a break in it. And that's uh, up above. That's where all the geoengineering has taken place. So we don't get to see the actual spraying a lot anymore was that hit with some kind of electricity that is oh burning up the metals yeah this is our sky it's so toxic here it's unbelievably toxic um, so I was actually surprised. No, I wasn't so surprised. Yeah, look at this too. Oh my god. Really? These are our clouds? This is this is this is that's not a rain cloud. No. Nope. No. We just have black clouds and nobody says anything. I listened to this this radio show today and they were talking about the hurricane and um and he was talking to, oh, some uh, chief of police upstate, in some upstate town. And this guy was talking about power outages and trees falling and flooding. And I'm like, wow, because we've never had a hurricane just sit over us for days. Okay. Well, you didn't look into Harvey and the weather modification. Um, but what, what is astounding? is I listen to them and nobody talks about the sky and today on the radio I was listening to this guy and he was saying you know it's surreal and I was like yeah it really is surreal look at this friggin sky and he said because we don't have any clouds well clouds are now beginning to move in and I'm looking at this guy and I'm going 
Yeah? No clouds, huh? Really? No clouds in upstate South Carolina. What the hell am I showing you here? Isn't that cloud? And how about those straight edge clouds? I love those. What the hell is that? It's so in our face. Everything is so in our face. So you listen to them talk about climate change. You listen to them talk about, you know, these uh, weather events, extreme weather events, and no one mentions the sky, the clouds, the clouds burning up, the lines. You know, this was this was later on tonight. I looked at the sky at one point this evening and it looked yellow. And by the time I got my camera and came out, it went pink with all these lines. Then we also had a lot of black carbon dust dumped in, in between, or sitting on the white lines. You've got the black carbon dust and the use black carbon dust to modify the weather. And yes, you know, <laughs> when you're looking at a real possibility of being without power for a long period of time, it's hard enough when you have family and friends around and But this is going to be brutal for me because I don't have anyone. And this is all I have. So getting through every single day? <laughs> well, well, if I make it, I will, I will say, yeah, okay, I am strong. Look at this, look at this sky. Nobody says anything. And we've got a hurricane that's going to be sitting over us for days. And oh my God. Yep. So surreal. Everything is just so surreal. Life sure has stumped me. It sure has stumped me. I don't know what to make of it anymore. And how did I get there? Well, I got there from my fellow two-leggeds, not knowing what to make of them anymore. So, black carbon dust and just a little bit of lithium, and you got some weather coming. It's pretty humid here. That's all I have for you guys. Stay safe, everybody.